Wes Anderson's probably one of my favorite filmmakers in the past 25 years. He, to me, he's one of the great American filmmakers. Um, one of the most imaginative, one of the best writers, one of the best world builders. He's one of the best all-around filmmakers I've really ever seen. Um, really taking from the past and bringing it to the present and the future in making his movies. Um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about, um, about his movies. We'll go through his movies and lead up to his, um, his newest movie. And, um, we'll kind of, I'm going to talk a little bit about his background a little bit. I've got his biography pulled up here. We'll kind of read from it and, um, kind of see uh, where he comes from. The people he chooses to work with is wonderful. The actors, I really credit him for really bringing back Bill Murray from basically make, making Bill Murray relevant again. He's brilliant in Wes's movies. Angelica Houston's always wonderful to the just cavalcade of just amazing actors that he works with. So um, let's get started here. I'm going to read a little bit of Wes Anderson's background and we'll um, you can kind of look along and read along with me here. Um, Wes Anderson here. Um, Anderson attended the University of Texas in Austin where he majored in philosophy. It was there that he met Owen Wilson, that he became friends and began making short films, some of which aired on local cable access stations. One of their shorts was Bottle Rocket, 1994, which starred Owen and his brother Luke. The short was screened in a Sundance Film Festival where it was successfully received. So, um, that would be the first movie that I had, um, that was the first movie that I had, um, seen of Wes Anderson's. And I actually, the funny thing was, I didn't realize this was like a Wes Anderson movie. It was his first movie. And I remember renting this at a local video store that kind of, they rented a lot of, that's where I seen like clerks and stuff. They rented a lot of like, I guess, lower budget or independent movies at the time. So um, I remember watching this and really liking this movie, but not until, um, I guess Rushmore until I seen Rushmore and then I started, you know, I loved Rushmore. So, which many people did. And so it started, you know, I put two and two together and then I seen where he had made bottle rocket. And I was like, have I seen that before? After I watched it, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. And then I, uh, when you go back and watch bottle rocket, you start, you know, seeing the resemblance of filmmaking style and, it, and I think Bottle Rocket's kind of more of a straightforward movie, but I guess that's where we'll start today was with Bottle Rocket. Um, now, I haven't seen the Bottle Rocket. Um, I don't think I've seen any of his, and I'm not sure where you can actually go and see some of his shorts. Um, it could, there might be a copy of it with the Blu-ray of Bottle Rocket. I can't remember. I actually have a copy of this on Laserdisc. This is the only... Only a um, Wes Anderson movie I have on Laserdisc. There is available, um, Rushmore's available, but I've never found it at a price I'd want to buy it at. But we'll flip over here and um, you get a look at the Bottle Rocket poster right there. Pretty familiar. Owen and Luke Wilson. Uh, Owen, I don't know, I ought to see, yeah, Owen is credited as writing with Wes as well. I couldn't remember if Owen and Luke are credited, but just it's just Owen that's credited, not Luke. Um, a really sweet little love story, I would say. Love story, crime caper. This movie also features... Um, which you, you start seeing some of his regular players, you know, Luke and Owen, obviously. Um, Robert Musgrave, Bob Maplethorpe, Maplethorpe <laughs> excuse me. Um, who else is in here? I'm trying to 
let's see which guy here. Yeah, and Andrew Wilson. I guess that's uh I don't know if that's if Andrew is one of Luke and Will if they're his brother as well. I'm not positive hot positive, but Future Man is in a couple of his other movies in small role form. And um but James Kahn as well is in here. He's not listed on this top cast list for some weird reason. I don't I don't know why, but but James Kahn's in here as well. Really wonderful wonderful little role for him. But essentially this movie is a uh you know, at the beginning, you know, Luke is in a um kind of a rehab type mental facility, I guess, and Owen kind of stages this um breakout scenario even though he luke doesn't have to which anthony in the movie anthony and digman uh, i like the names the, the name digman that's a pretty funny name but it's um but he digman's trying to break anthony out of this institution even though he's leaving willfully and he's been able to leave it's like a rest place for like a mentally exhausted type facility even though you Kind of come to learn, I don't know why Luke would, I mean, excuse me, Anthony would have to do this. But, but essentially, it, it turns into, Digman has gotten into this um, group of people called the Lawn Wranglers. He's been working for them, but they're also a small-time crime syndicate of sorts. And they're planning on doing this bank heist, well, like a robbery of sorts. So it's, James Conn's the leader of this group, and... Um, so it's just kind of the antics of leading up to this point. And um, it's a fun little movie. After they do the heist, they do a little heist to make a little money. And they end up going on the run. And they go to... You really, I re, you really don't know. I don't. I guess this place, it takes place in Texas since... Um, I, I would imagine. Because it seems they run... They don't seem to leave the country. But they go close to the Mexican border. Because you, you have a... Uh, you know, you have Anthony's character who um, essentially meets this woman who... I'm trying to find out which one she is in here. That's... I hate how they do the... I hate how they do this on here. Yeah, this... Here's her right here. The... Lumi Cavazos... Cavazos... Is Inez. And he um, befriends her and she's just like a maid at the hotel and they kind of fall in love so, and it so at the end you know you get the you get the every time i start itching but essentially you get at the end you get the bank heist and it goes a foul because and it's all kind of a setup it's all just a setup for them to rob um uh bob maplethorpe's house and he's kind of like supposed to be like this rich kid or something him and um him and um, Future Man are brothers, and they basically set this whole thing up to rob his house while they're doing this other job. And the other job goes afoul, and they go to jail, and blah blah blah. This is a this is a great little story here, and uh, it's it's more of his, one of his more straightforward movies, I would say. But then you move on to Rushmore. This was nineteen. 1998, 1998, excuse me. And this would also be co-written by Owen and Wes. This would star Jason Schwartzman, Bill Murray, and Olivia Williams. Some shots of it right here. Shots of production right here. And, um... This will be our first um, introduction to Jason Schwartzman. As far as I know, I, I, I can't remember if he appeared in anything beforehand. I'm sure he did, but this is first major production. This will be The Return of Bill Murray. We also have um, Seymour Cassell as Burt Bert Fisher, which would show up in other Wes Anderson movies. Brian Cox is also in this movie, a wonderful character. I think he shows up in... Um, another movie of his Sarah Tanaka as well but you also have Luke Wilson in a small role and um, also Future Man which um, 
it's, it's Coach Beck in this movie. I'm always calling Future Man. But um, this is about a um, kind of a over underachieving student who goes to a place called Rushmore Academy. And this is kind of a, and he got into this academy by basically writing a play. He's like a kind of a playwright who likes to put on plays, but he's also involved in like just about every extracurricular activity the school provides, even inventing some himself. And he, um, he will um, end up befriending Bill Murray's character, Herman Bloom. This would, um, lead to um lead to a friendship between the two and bill murray was like a kind of a industrial so he's just a rich guy and he um befriends jason they both kind of brief befriend each other and jason schwartzman falls in love with olivia williams character rosemary cross a teacher at the school and um eventually leads to him getting kicked out of the school and he has to go to public school so they it's just him trying to you know put he, he just wants to put on his plays and he's like a really bad student because that's all he you know that's all he does is kind of puts on plays and things like that and it's a it's a just a hilarious story you know Wes Anderson I didn't say at the beginning the thing about I like about Wes Anderson is his character building and his um the thing he gets right that so many of the older directors do and so many new directors don't, and there's just so much, he, he's such an original director and writer. When I say like character building, you get to know about the characters, you learn about the characters and you feel for the characters and you appreciate the characters no matter what they're doing. And, um, he, um, and also in the directing point, he kind of, um, and it's just the way the dialogue is, um, and the dialogue is spoken, the, the timing of the dialogue is very important, the pacing of the dialogue, the pacing of the scenes all together, the way the things are shot are just masterfully put together. They're just wonderful. There's so much thought put into every scene of the movie, all the aesthetics, and any time that he used special effects. But everybody's seen Rushmore, wonderful movie. Hopefully you've seen all of his movies like I have a million times. Very much rewatchability in his movies. I can watch his movies. I like that I'll probably start going back and watching them once again, preparing for his new movie, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. The next up is The Royal Tenenbaums. Another, this movie would also feature Bill Murray. Gene Hackman, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelica Houston, Ben Stiller, Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson, Bill Murray, Danny Glover, once again, Seymour Cassell, Alec Baldwin, he's the narrator, I forgot about that, and uh, Kumar Palama, this pagoda, which is a reoccurring in his movies, uh, Danny Glover as well. And a, just a wonderful cast. This movie is... The Citric members of the dysfunctional family reluctantly gather under the same roof for various reasons. Well, you basically have a, a family full of basically geniuses and all in their own right. Luke Wilson's character was a sports star... Ben Stiller's character. Okay, Gwyneth Ben... Gwyneth Paltrow, Ben Stiller, and Luke Wilson. Two brothers and a sister. Owen Wilson in this movie is the eccentric next-door neighbor who's always... He's the kid that's always hanging around that wants to be this family, wants to be these people. But these... Uh, and then Angelica's the mother... Gene Hackman is the father. And they're basically, uh, Gene Hackman was a lawyer and he becomes estranged from his wife and he basically, she kind of raises them in, in a way 
but he's always the centric guy, like going to dog fights and stuff like that. Just weird, you know, kind of crazy going on. And they're all basically, but they're basically all these people that kind of fell from glory once they've reached uh, adulthood and they're all kind of, their lives are kind of waning. Ben Stiller's character, wife had died in a plane accident and now he's overprotected of his two children, which I'm one of them's Yuri and um, I apologize. I don't have their names pulled up. One's Uzi and Yuri Tenenbaum. And it's just, just being able to write for this many characters is just amazing. It's just an amazing achievement to being able to keep track of all this stuff. And um, it's just uh, the characters are amazing. They're just amazingly written. Now, Bill Murray doesn't have a major role in this movie. He is the, he, he's pretty big. He's got a, he's a psychiatrist of, um, I guess, Gwyneth Paltrow and kind of, well, he's like her, like lover supposedly, or boyfriend, but he's much older than her. And she's always presented, like as you see in this picture here, she's always, she still kind of has the look of a younger girl, still the way she looks and the way she, um, her kind of mannerisms and things like that. So it kind of is trying to say, well, these people really never grew up. They're still kind of locked in their um, childish ways. But, if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend The Royal Tenenbaums. An amazing movie. And I'm probably over-explaining all these movies to you guys. But next up would be The Life Aquatic. This would be a Bill Murray-driven movie. A very Jacques Cousteau-inspired movie. Okay, with a plan to exact revenge on a mythical shark that killed his partner, oceanographer Steve Zissou, Bill Murray, rallies a crew that includes his estranged wife, a journalist, and a man who may or may not be his son. Okay, the top cast in this movie is Bill Murray, Owen Wilson, Angelica Houston, Kate Blanchett, Willem Dafoe, Jeff Goldblum, Michael Gambone, Noah Taylor, Bud Court, uh, Bud Court, okay, let me see here, Robin Cohen, uh, Boris Abula, he is, I think he is the guy who plays all of the, I think he is, no, I'm, excuse me, he's, he, he's somebody else, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm about to speak out of turn there, Seymour Cassell returns, but uh, the funny thing, just real quick, Bud Court, if you guys don't know, was in um, was in this movie, Harold and Maude. But if you guys didn't know, Bud Court was in the movie Harold and Maude. If you have seen that movie, a wonderful movie, as a young man. He turns up in his as the Bond. It is causing Bill Ubell in here, but he is the Bond stooge for the bank. And uh, but Bill Murray's like a Steve, like it's saying up there, he is a, at the beginning of the movie, it shows him presenting his latest documentary and he, um, where his, uh, his friend has been eaten by this, this shark that's, uh, that's called like the, it's like a tiger shark or something like that. And he, um, Re says then that he seeks revenge on this shark. So then he's, but um, Owen comes in, Ned Plimpton, he's an airline pilot here in Kentucky, supposedly an uh, airline pilot here in Kentucky. Supposedly he's uh, Steve Zissou. He think you know he thinks he's Steve Zissou's his father, and um, it's just uh, it's just an adventure movie. Really wonderful um, use and and something that and and another thing that Wes does is he always he likes. I don't know if this comes from from the stage. I'm not a huge play watcher, 
but I don't think this comes from the stage, but he always, it seemed like in his movies, he always has like some kind of model representation of whatever it is. Like there's a model representation of the, the ship that Bill Murray has. And, and then you can see all the different components of the ship as in a side cutaway. So there's always like this kind of, um, kind of component to a lot of his movies where he's like well, he, when he wants to describe something he kind of breaks things down like a house a model of a house or something like that he breaks it down in the form of an actual model but it's filmed like it's a real thing and it's really cool so you can see the inner goings of this kind of fantasy kind of ship you know it's not real obviously but it's like this fantasy ship with all these you know it's this elaborate place you know film editing suite and this big Turkish style bath and things like that. You know, it's, it's just a, it's just an amazing movie with another great cast, another amazing writer, amazing writing and wonderful acting. Just, you know, Jeff Goldblum and yeah, I mean, you just can't, you can't go wrong with this movie. Love this movie. Highly recommend it. Let's move on here. We move on from the Life Aquatic to the Jarjeeling Limited. This movie would feature Owen Wilson, Adrian Brody, Jason Schwartzman, Mara Karan, Wallace Woodworthy. Okay, sorry, I can't pronounce some of these names correctly. Ross Alul Wally. Bill Murray is also in this. Angelica Houston. Kumar Paloma. But this tagline here is a year after their father's funeral, three brothers travel across India by train and attempt to bond with each other. Just another wonderfully shot movie. Um, how to explain this movie? I do not know. It is a train trip. Darjeeling is a... Darjeeling Limited is a train that they're traveling on. Darjeeling, Darjeeling is a, um, I guess it would be called, a, what's the best word for it? A province in India or a territory in India. I don't, I don't know what you call it. There is a famous tea called Darjeeling as well, but it's just their, their bonding experience going across country. These three eccentric brother, brothers. Adrian Brody is wonderful in this movie. This would be the first appearance of Adrian Brody in a Wes Anderson movie. Like Wes Anderson a whole... I mean, like Adrian Brody a whole lot. Um, probably my first movie I saw Adrian in was probably The Son of Sam, or Summer of Sam, excuse me. Um, he was good in that. He played like that punk rocker guy. Really cool movie. If you've not seen that one, that's a good one. But, um, Angelica Houston's the eccentric mother, and she's living at, like, a, um, I guess, like, a monastery-type place, and, um, it's just a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story, and I highly recommend watching. I can't really explain it, I apologize, I can't really explain, because it's just, it's just a, um, it's just a kind of a character building top movie character driven. You learn about the characters and their little adventures, the places they stop, the things they learn. It's just a fun movie. I highly recommend seeing it, but I highly recommend you to see it to understand it. I, if you notice, I'm skipping over some of these shorts here, but next we get into his first, stop motion movie this is the fantastic mr fox probably one of his best known movies to the layman audience i think he's known for this movie um more than anything else this is also a roll doll book uh charlie and the chocolate factory and such books like that this would star the voice talents of George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Bill Murray, Jason Schwartzman, Walt Wallace Wolodarski, Eric Chase Anderson, Michael Gambone, Willem Dafoe, Owen Wilson, Jarvis Cocker, Karen Duffy, Wes Anderson, 
didn't know Karen Duffy did something in that. That's pretty wild. I know Son of West did a voice. So Roman, Roman Coppola also did a character in this, Jeremy Dawson. Its tagline is, An urbane fox cannot resist returning to his farm, reading ways, uh, raiding ways, and then uh, return to his farm, raiding ways, and then must help his community survive the farmer's retaliation. Excuse me, I messed that up royally. But uh, Mr. Fox is a fox. This takes play. These are all animals of different sorts. There's Mrs. Fox. Ash, which is the son of Mr. Fox. Badger. And uh, Mr. Anderson. There is some human elements to this, but this is kind of a survival movie for these characters. But it is a, you know, it's all dialogue driven, so it's really wonderful. And action sequences with the stop motion, it's really wonderful. It was just the way it's done. Most of you guys have probably seen this, and it's, it's you guys know this is a wonderful movie. Well written. What dialogue is magnifique you know it's just wonderful and um but mr fox is a you know he was a you know i guess he was just a fox in his fox ways stealing chickens things like that and then he falls in love and settles down and has children and um has to give up his ways until until he um starts um And still he starts, uh, so the, the farmer starts, uh, the, the, the three major farmers start invading on their land and they start stealing and doing sabotage to these three farmers. And um, so antics ensue. Highly recommend this movie. I uh, just say that with all these, Wes Anderson's like my favorite director, probably of one of all time almost, but it's, I highly recommend any of his movies. So we'll move on here. Fantastic Mr. Fox to Moonrise Kingdom. Probably one of my favorite. Probably one of my favorite of his movies. I don't know why, but for some reason this is one of my favorites. A pair of young lovers flee their New England town, which causes a local research party fan out to find them. I've got all kinds of noises in the background. I apologize. This would have Jared Gilman, Jared Gilman, Kara Haywood, Bruce Willis, Bill Murray, Edward Norton, Francis McDormand, Tilda Swinton, Jason Schwartzman. But um, this is another cast. I, I got, I'm getting into this, and I'm just not thinking of the right words to. Uh, to uh, describe his movies it's hard to really because they're but this is you know basically a you know bill murray and till uh bill murray and um and francis mcdormand are they're the parents of kara hayward Susie, and she has been corresponding with uh jerry gilman's character sam who is an orphan and um he is also part of a um Boy Scout type troop. Um, what are their names in this? I'm sorry. I'm forgetting the little minute details of this. I apologize. But he, um, but they basically have kind of uh, become fond of each other through correspondence. And um, so they have plans to meet up. And the Susie character essentially runs away from home. Her parents are kind of dysfunctional. She has two brothers and she feels ignored type, that kind of stuff. So they run away together and go across this. Um, they're on this um, New England island. It, it says in here just this New England here, but it's like on an actual like little island. And they um, they kind of run to get run away together on this island using his um, using his uh, scouting skills, and they will um, evade the capture and various things and also a roving gang of his fellow um of the fellow scouting troop who um come after him pretty viciously but he disposes of them very viciously for children 
it's just a wonderful little it's it's just it's a fun little adventure movie and um Bruce Willis is the also in this movie really wonderful captain he's the captain sharp he's kind of like the he's kind of like the head of the he's like basically the only police officer in this little town and he um he's kind of dispatched to go find these people they finally find them and bring them together and he ends up kind of adopting Sam at the end of the movie but wonderful movie Love this movie. Edward Norton's great as the Scoutmaster. And uh, it's just, um, I didn't mention, but um, Harvey Keitel's in this movie also. Harvey Keitel's, Harvey Keitel is in this movie as well. He's like the, he's like the Scoutmaster General. You know, he's like the overall Scout leader of this whole troop. Wonderful movie, just wonderful characters. And how, you know, this is another great movie of Wes's. One of my favorites. Sorry, I got thrown off. My dog started barking and everything. The mailman came. The dog was barking crazy. I had to stop the video. Sorry about the cut there, but that's how it goes sometimes. But moving on from Moonrise Kingdom, we move up to, let's see here. What was next? The Grand, make sure there wasn't anything I'm missing here. We move up to the Grand Budapest Hotel. And I'm just showing you his major motion pictures. Some of this other stuff's in there. I think it's like commercials and stuff. It's weird. But a Grand Budapest Hotel. Let's see what its tag is. Uh, now, this is internet, internet movie database taglines and stuff. So I'm just going by this. Make something easy to read. A little synopsis. A writer encounters the owner of an aging high-class hotel who tells him... Of early years serving as lobby boy in hotel glorious years under exceptional concierge. Under an exceptional concierge. Uh, the top cast on here is Ralph Fiennes, Murray Abrams, F. Murray Abrams, Matthew Malik, Adrian Brody, William Defoe, Jeff Goldblum, Harvey Keitel, Jude Law, Bill Murray, Edward Norton. Sars Ronan, maybe one of her first roles, major roles. But uh, we also have Jason Schwartzman, Tilda Swinton, Leia Sado. I hope I pronounced that right. Tom Wilkerson, Owen Wilson, Tony Revolori, and Larry Pine. Um, the work, the thing is, is the. I hate, I hate how they do this. They, they're they missing, like, oh, here he is, Tony Revolori. Okay, that's zero. Uh, my, my bad. I just, his name didn't fit what I thought. So, excuse me. But essentially, uh, this movie, I was thinking about this earlier. The movie, I believe, is, at the beginning of the movie, you see somebody opening a book up like they're going to read from a book. So, I think the movie is told through the aspect of a book being read. And you finding this information out through a story being told because it's obviously in it everything's fictionalized, but it's it's definitely the lead up to World War II, the Nazi occupation of Europe, and you um, but nobody's called like Nazis and stuff like that. There's different names for it, but you have kind of like Gestapo type members and this kind of things going on. There's different hotels being taken over and ran by the Nazi, you know, ran by this, ran by this um by this organization and um I, i'm sorry i'm just looking through here to see if there's actually a name for this my apologies i haven't re-watched them to get the names for a while but it, but essentially i think this movie's been told through a book it's been told through a story because of the fictionalization of all this stuff and the points of view but you basically you know you have an old man at the beginning and somebody starts and he starts telling the tale of his uh life as a uh Life as a bag boy, uh, working under this, working under Ralph Fiennes' character, who is Gustav, Gustav, M. Gustav, excuse me, uh, but M. Gustav, and um, he's like a concierge who has a fondness for old rich ladies. Uh, I was going to say proclivity to sound a little bit better, a proclivity to old rich ladies, and um, servicing their ever wants and needs. You can imagine what that is. But he uh, has basically, over the course of several seasons, have fallen in love with this one old lady. 
and she she passes away and he finds out that he inherits this portrait of her and um so ralph finds with the help of zero uh M. Gust um gustav with the help of zero goes to collect this painting but this painting is worth a lot of money and they do the family extremely this crazy i don't even know what the right words to call kind of this order of people but it's very like like the women or it's just really i i don't even know what you would call them but adrian Brody's like, like they're they're basically these evil type people they're like evil and willing to foes one adrian Brody and willing to foe uh jopling and dimitri are brothers and they don't want this painting to get out of their hands. So, it, you know, Gustav ends up stealing the painting with help from the service workers inside. And they, and he um, leaves with the painting. And uh, eventually he's caught by the Gustav and put in prison. And then they, they have to break him out. And it's just the adventures of these characters going through. And then it's a, and then basically, you know, Bill Murray, a bunch of these characters just come in towards the end and um there are people that kind of help gustav and zero escape evasion all the way back to the hotel and it's just a very fun little story it's kind of dark and dark comedy here and there in different par parts of the movie highly recommend this one it's another one aesthetically beautiful very well put together. Wonderful cinematography. He always works with great cinematographers. The use of modeling in his movies, like I said before, used a lot in this movie. Just really wonderful. Highly recommend this movie very much. But we move on from the Grand Budapest Hotel to a movie that I don't believe is... Um, most people have not, I don't know if a lot of people have seen this or not. I find this movie really good. It would take us into the next entry into stop motion as we've seen in um, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. But this is Isle of Dogs. This movie is spoken Japanese with subtitles. Um... This is about a, uh, it's basically about, I guess it's like, uh, theoretically, uh, like a, it's, basically you have a, the Japanese society decides they're going to outlaw dogs because like dog bites or something like disease or something. So they exile all the dogs to this island and this boy ends up going there to um, find his particular dog that had been taken away from him. And it's an adventure throughout this, um, of through the, you know, through the eyes of the dogs and the different, uh, I guess there's some cats and stuff in there, but there's, it's an adventure to, I guess, kind of rescue the kid who went to find him and to exonerate themselves. It's, uh, hard to explain, but the movie is in Japanese, the subtitles, and I, I'm trying to think there's something weird. I don't know if the dogs have like their own language in it, and I can't remember if it's subtitled, but... I can't remember how that works, but it's like very interesting how it's all put together. A very interesting movie. It's basically like these men, these like men versus the dogs kind of situation. Send them. It's it's a it's a very interesting point of view, and it's another movie I would very much you should very much. But you know, at first time I saw it, I was like not sure of it, but it's like one of those movies you go back and watch and you're like this is really good you know it's really great sometimes movies have to be a two watcher i knew it was good the first time around but sometimes in the theater sometimes as the you would think you'd have more concentration but maybe sometimes you're distracted and or have something else on your mind and you just don't pay attention to it but after watching it at home i really fell in love with this movie and probably need to go back and watch it again but very good it's a very good movie but this leads us to the newest movie by Wes Anderson. 
Uh, hopefully this video's not been too bad long. Listen to me ramble. I've tried to do my best I could on this, but the new movie is The French Dispatch. And um, can't wait till this movie. This comes out next week, the 29th of October. A love letter to journalists set in the outpost of an American newspaper in a fictional 20th century French city that brings to life a collection of stories published in French Disp the French Dispatch magazine. Uh, it sounds very interesting. That's really all I know about it because I don't like trying to dig too deep in it before I see a movie. I want to see the movie basically, um, I guess untouched or um i don't want to i don't want to know too much about this movie but we will look at the cast because i've have seen some of the cast obviously seen some of the trailers this is benicio del toro adrian brodery tilda swindon Leia sadu sado francis mcdormand timothy chamelay lynn cadori jeffrey wright matthew nalric steve park bill murray Owen Wilson, Henry Winkler, Bob Babylon, uh, Balaban, Balaban, Louis Smith, Tony Revolori, a huge cast, Larry Pine, and Denise Menoche, Menoche, Menoche. Don't know that pronunciation. Uh, looks excellent. Look like we're going to be getting a lot of different type of cinematography different types of um it's like some's black and white some's color very interesting um i know by the it looks like we'll be using like some of the some of his claymations it looks like it's kind of a lot of his a culmination of a lot of his different works modeling stop motion claymation things you know different types of um different types of um filmmaking techniques it looks really wonderful and I'm highly looking forward to this movie. If you guys want to, I will play the trailer here. And I don't know if I'm set up for sound or not. Craig Anderson, the French Dispatch. There's force for the crime, there's politics. It's brilliant. A brittle free wheel through a teeming bazaar. Physically and mentally. Oh. Anderson bombards us with delicious concoctions. Like on recipe. It's a rocket ship ride to your cinematic soul. I assure you it's erotic. It's possibly a turning point in the evolution of human photography. And it's positively exuberant with stars of the silver screen. You're fired. Huh? Don't quiet my office. It's one of the best movies of the year. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thanks, everybody, for watching this. Um, a little bit of rundown of Wes Anderson. Uh, like I'm saying before, he's like one of my favorite directors and of the past 25 years. He just has wonderful, um, just has wonderful um, movies. And I guess I would call them films because they're actually films. Cause they're incredible. And um, I wanted to share that with you guys. I've been wanting to make a Wes Anderson uh, video for a long time. And what a better time to do it leading up to his new movie, The French Dispatch. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to get out of here and leave you guys alone. I will talk to you guys later. See ya. And if you like what you've seen today, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Follow the page. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Kentucky Fried Reviews 420. And make sure to follow me on Rumble and on YouTube. I will talk to you guys later.